Okay, Vox, so I'm back. Uh, the last soldiers have left. The bitching and moaning about what the US has done is, you know, we are hearing it from obviously China is amping it up, Russia is amping it up. Uh, you have obviously the Indian Chattarati, which I said 60 years old plus, amping it up about the unreliability of the United States. Hey, but end of the day, no more US boots on ground in Afghanistan. That's the exciting part, right? Then, US moves its mission from Kabul to Doha. Defensive US president says evacuation was an extraordinary success, which I think it was. And this is the other headline 20 years and 2.3 trillion later, America's longest war ends as last troops leave one minute before deadline. Important, folks, because it's going to obviously have, going to have a lot of geopolitical repercussions. And this kind of a, a earthquake always allows middle powers like India to play, always leaves a space for countries like India. And you'll see why, right? Afghanistan braces for Taliban 2.0. And what does Mohammed Qureshi writes? We expect that consensus government will be formed in the coming days in Afghanistan. Looking challenging. A very strong resolution in the UN. Afghanistan soil must still be used to attack nations at the UNSC. LET, JEM need to be called out. Say Shringla, the Russian side, which has been working closely with China on Afghanistan, abstained on the similar lines people added. And this is the way it's put out. China and Russia team up and abstain. China questioned resolution's urgency, wanted ETIM named with ISIL. Russia backed Chinese stance, said evacuation of highly skilled Afghans would impact country's socio-economic situation. But I, this, is, this is my worry. The way I don't think the intelligence here is something that that even the even this this particular uh, brand of Taliban can handle. Like, U.S. policy of intervention is doomed to fail, says senior Chinese official. They continue to talk. I heard they saw this video in Hong Kong. Oh, they go on and on. They don't understand what they're talking about, right? Do they have anybody listening? Probably the third third tier nations. India holds talk with Talibs, discusses return of Indians. And this is the important part, right? Contact Indian envoy meets key Taliban leader in Qatar. IMA Sheru to the Afghanistan foreign minister. Maybe meeting was held at Afghan outfit's request, right? Safe return of India's terror in, uh, terror in focus at first India Taliban meet. He says, Mohammed Abbas and Kazai, head of the Taliban's political office in Doha. The meeting was held at the Indian embassy in Doha on the request of the Taliban side. And this is the same guy who's saying he wants trade, right? But this is where the challenge starts for India. Al Qaeda calls for Kashmir liberation. Britain ready to attack Islamic State terrorists. Britain's got to play the Taliban hand, man. Britain's always been playing the Taliban hand since 2008, folks. Echoes of 2015 as EU grapples with Afghan migrants. At least seven Taliban members killed in Panjshir fighting resistance forces. So, focus. Why are the European allies up and against what Biden did? There are called two reasons. One is obviously what is happening here is 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 uh, is the refugee threat or fear of refugees. The second more important point, folks, remember is I think the US intelligence now doesn't trust the Brits because the Brits have always been running a narrative along with the ISI and the Taliban for as far as 2008 and sometimes against the interests of the United States. I think that is probably one of the unsaid reasons why the United States didn't, didn't bring on board the Europeans, especially the United Kingdom. Cheers. More later. Let's go back to my favorite threat, China. So folks, you can see at the UNSC, how Russia and China are essentially working against India's interests. They're on their own interests, but you know, China is playing Pakistan's game, its own problem with ETIM. Russia has got its own. I mean, it's Russia's trying to find an excuse. They've, all, they've always tried to keep, I mean, kept India out of the out of the tables, giving us invitations and withdrawing. So, but with Beijing, what do we do? As Swato Gongoli writes, long game with Beijing. China wants to dominate its periphery. India should expect intermittent border clash. This is the important part. He says, Wednesday should we hold our breath for peace and tranquility to be restored in border areas and for India-China relations to return to an even keel soon? For an answer, one would do worse than could do worse than turn to the keynote speech delivered by President Xi Jinping on July 1st, making the centenary of the CCP this month. She uh, uh, admonished foreigners that were that they would have their heads bashed bloody against a great wall of steel forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people if they attempted to bully China. I guess it's the United States and India, right? Likewise, the CCP considers Arunachal Pradesh to be part of China as a southern part of its Tibetan province. Russia also beware because I think Siberia they consider it to be their own too, right? There's abundant evidence that China intends to dominate its periphery. As a consequence, New Delhi will face intense pressure from Beijing, which will wax and wane over the medium term. To write this out, New Delhi must take a leaf out of Beijing's book and learn to play the long game. 
This could include intermittent wars, both on the LAC and LOC. Indian foreign policy and its military will be tested as never before, and I hope we are ready. But this is the kind of stuff. China ready for mutually accept acceptable solution on emergency issues. They just want the trade to start, right? CPC commands the gun, says she, as he tells military to expedite modern, uh, modernization. China didn't honor border parks. Jay Shankar is very clear. He says China has, uh, had last year arrived at a five-point consensus in Moscow to resolve the LSE standoff. The disengagement process remains far from complete, though despite India is repeatedly saying that the early, the, that early and complete disengagement is necessary for overall development of ties. Again, folks, Russia. Like I said, Russia is the key culprit here. China woos young Tibetans to join PLA. Mm. There's an element of coercion in PLA's Tibet, Tibet recruitment. She must, she meets top military officials in Lhasa, highlights lasting stability, prosperity in Tibet. And she visits Tibet border town near Arunachal. She makes first Tibet visit as leader of China. Message, periphery in trouble. India closely watching Xi's intriguing move on LAC. Mm. Then confronting Xi. What does it say? However, there was there has been no progress on disengagement in Denchok, Gogra, Hot Springs, and Despite. China's actions and their scales have altered the bilateral relationship, noticeably in keeping China out of the forthcoming 5G transaction and parts of the tech market. That's what India has done. As India works on its economic transformation, it should deepen its ties with Taiwan, a global leader in semiconductors. Deepening ties will simultaneously serve India's economic interests and send China a message. Being differential to China's sensitivities won't help India's cause. Absolutely right. We are, this is the other thing you're right. Population in Tibet's border regions rose 10.5% since China. Here, there's important part. These are not Tibetans. These are all Han Chinese being relocated. Be very careful. PLA troops enter Demchok fume at Dalai's birthday events. Okay. China marks Tibet anniversary with call to accept communist rule. Accept, right? Amid LAC tensions, PM, PM calls on Dalai Lama for birthday wish. Captain others to greet him. Now, this is important. Dalai Lama must be brought out into the open. Our relationship with him. PM wishes Dalai sends another message to China. Had called Biden while ignoring CCP's 100th anniversary. Why would they congratulate the CCP for 100 years, right? Making Dalai greetings public a rare step and an important step. India must have a clear Tibet policy, and I've always said that. Tibet is a Trump card. By wishing the Dalai Lama on his 86th birthday on the phone and tweeting about it, Prime Minister PM Narendra Modi has done well in opening up a discussion on India's Tibet policy. He says, India should follow it up with a policy position that it would respect the wishes of the Dalai Lama and other Tibetan spiritual leaders outside China on the, on, outside China on the matter of succession. Mend fences with all sects and mobilize international opinion on the issue and use the United States, right? First high-speed train in Tibet carries PLA personnel reports. That's all that is. Therefore, it's going to do nothing else. India, on the other hand, plans four airports, 37 helipads for boosting Ladakh connectivity. And like I said, democratic quad versus China quad. Right? It is important, even as the Sherpas of the quad democracies, the United States, India, Japan, and Australia prepare for a summit of the top leaders in Washington later this year. A rival quadrilateral grouping led by principal challenger China is in the making with Russia, Pakistan, and Iran. That's called the BRIC. Fit. Fired by the hubris of successful centenary of the Communist Party of China, hubris. Beijing has been plotting its next moves on the geopolitical chessboard and countering Quad is one of them. Is there a credible threat to the democratic Quad? Understanding China's coalescence with each of these actors is instructive and you'll find basically there is no nothing underpinning this relationship except hate for the United States. That won't last for very long for cheers more later. So the ramping up of Pressure, economic pressure on China continues, so they keep finding ways around it. See, three Chinese held an illegal loan app case get bail. I wonder why. Pakistan, China, romance scam targeting rich men busted. This was in Madhya Pradesh. This is what's happening. Defying ban Chinese apps quietly grow in India again. And I think India really has to be careful about that, right? News click used by China to polish image. This is what I always worry about, right? Portal denies finances is a front for CPC, but that's what it is. Got to be careful. A lot of our guys are getting uh, bamboozled by these uh, these Chinese uh, uh, chatter. ED probes media portals funding from businessmen linked to China regime. Then you have IT department raids government control ZT. Anything government controls, you got to worry. And what's happening there? BJP avoids Hong Kong showdown on sanctions. Beijing crackdown target online celebrities. So nobody is safe in China because it's just going a different way. It's not the same China, it's not the same Hong Kong. And all my friends who say, oh, I live in Hong Kong, it's no longer Hong Kong, it's China, folks. More later. 
folks, here we go. While talking about China, the first thing we need to acknowledge as Avtar Singh Basin writes, how PM Nehru mishandled China. The whole thing is about that mishandling of China, whether it was Tibet, whether the main thing by keeping up false appearances of friendship and then taking a rigid stand on the border without evidence. Nehru's China policy was a failure. India is still paying the price. It showed it. It says it, like, but there was times where language was absolutely undignified. The Chinese used against Nehru. There were times when you know was seen to be more sensitive to Pakistan's concern. But yet, despite clear negative signals, Nehru remained anxious to protect the illusion of a bye-bye relationship, keeping the contradictions on the of the in their relationships hidden from the people. God knows why, right? So this is what Sri Ram Cholia writes: to take on China, rely on diplomacy, military, and countermeasures. Nonetheless, there are lessons to be learned from three areas where China and India have disengaged. The first is sustained diplomacy yields dividends, but they're not yielding the kind of dividends that I would expect to. Second lesson is that diplomatic parlays are necessary, but not sufficient. Without a demonstration of military deterrence and a resolve and aggressive and expansive, China cannot be sweet-talked into dismantling its bunkers and semi-permanent structures or driving back its tanks and armored vehicles to pre April 220 position, but here we lost a plot when we gave up on the on the Kalashes, courtesy to Russia again. The third lesson is the since diplomatic resolution of the crisis is dependent on military operations and show of strategic determination, India must persist on the path of peace through strength. A difficult path lies ahead in India-China relations, especially as India-US strategic partnership is maturing and China-US ties are plumbing to the depths. This is the main one. Peace through strength is a delicate tightrope walk. But the gauntlet China has thrown is such that India does not have the option of shying away from the matching of for matching Chinese moves on the ground and in world capitals. Only a combination of bribery and bravery and wisdom can succeed in the long drawn out crisis. Then, learn to tackle China's discourse powers, right? Shruti Pandalai. In China's strategic lexicon, might is right, but might is essential to earn the right to speak. But she has also wanted China's discourse power to resonate externally, China's story on China's terms and Chinese ideas setting the global agenda. However, beyond persuasion, Chinese discourse power is all about power to prevail across the diplomatic, economic, military, cyber and technological domains. It has been manifested in the PLA's tactics of information warfare across the spectrum, including on the US, uh, US-China split, Taiwan, aggression in the South China Sea, technology wars and deflection of the COVID crisis. Delhi has understood that China will leave no stone unturned to show that it has all, it is on the right side of history, given the emphasis the CCP centenary celebration have placed on correct version of its deemed success. First, India is an open society, so that's a risk where Chinese officials have always had the opportunity to push the narrative in a vibrant and noisy media environment. Often there is no reciprocity given the absence of a level playing field on the Chinese side as they wield an iron fist with their state-controlled information flow. This awareness is yet to be internalized in India and requires constant calling up. Two, unlike earlier perceptions that India does not occupy mind space in China, Galwan proved Beijing's India policy is not monolithic. Three, when China speaks of dominating the information domain, it also means supremacy over the electronic and cyber domain. Four, despite India maintaining that it can no longer deal in peace and tranquility on the border from other aspects of the relationship, China's insistence on compartmentalizing the relationship while keeping multiple fronts on the line of actual control alive exemplifies coercive tactics. Finally, for India, while maintaining the China relationship will be guided by its policy of building its internal capacity, diversifying and leveraging external partnerships and keeping channels of dialogue open, the CCP's show of strength is also a reminder to heed the advice of practitioners and invest in capabilities further. China's discourse politics will target multiple fault lines in India. To prevail, New Delhi must create awareness and shore up its defenses to push back against the renewed Chinese ambitions to dominate mind games and project its powers, folks. More after this. So, folks, I quickly wind down on this China thing, clear and present danger. Uh, I'm, I'm now, for the next week, spending time on the dramas and the, and the movies that are happening in, in India, political movies that are happening in India. But till then, let's keep focused. Leave Afghanistan for the time being. There's no point recriminating about what the US should have, should have not done. It's also you got to have to uh, take a uh, deep breath and think about what India could have, could have, uh, should have, could have, or should have done. But let's stay away from it. A clear and present danger continues to be China, with the latest news coming out that maybe the Bagram base, the, uh, the Pakistan and China may take over, and it may be used against India. Possibilities. Be careful. Jai Hind.